fight crime, protect the innocent. Wait for world peace! But first... Uh, for those of you that are uh, VOD Andes, um, I would watch that first because you're going to get a big spoiler here. We got to the gate, north gate of Kar, which is the end of part two, but all these animals are just talk are talking over me. When you get to the end of Sorcery Part 2, if you haven't technically completed the game, it gives you an option, gives you the choice to either just go on and say, fuck it, who cares, or be able to go back and try to get the rest of the spell lines, and that's what we did. So we are still looking for one more line, and it's down here, where we have not been down here at all. We have to somehow make our way from here down to here, or make our way from here to here and restart it one more time down here. Bro, play something normal. The, what do you play something normal? What do you mean? <laughs> We're playing Black Ops Two tomorrow. That, uh, that's that's uh, that's pretty normal. All right, the docks. Uh, you return to the docks. You still need to find somewhere to stay for the night. Which, if you remember, oh, I st it's still nighttime. We haven't gone to bed yet. Sleep in an alley. Sleep by the river. Sleep in the market. Or the meat and cleaver had that um that musical act. Was there right? We can head over here. That's where the musicians were. We met the band down here. We shook their hand and it was like, yeah, come hang out at the uh, meet and cleaver later. So let's do that. Hey, what's a no all games are normal games. You know, you know what a normal, an, an, okay, an abnormal game would be like, I don't know, how many times can you do a backflip in a row? Like that, that's not, that's like kind of, kind of abnormal, right? We're like playing like, that's like me and who can do more backflips in a row. It's not like a normal game. How many times can you do backflip in a row? I don't know. None? That's just gymnastics. Well, no, that would be abnormal for me to just turn the camera on and do that. Like, hey guys, we're gonna play. How many backflips can I do in a row? It's like, that's what are you doing? This is like a video game. This is like just a normal game with like normal rules. That would be abnormal. That would be weird, right? So that's what, what are you talking about? All right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, I'm, no, I'm not talking about like w abnormal games versus a normal games. All right, we're in the Meat and Cleaver. The Meat and Cleaver is a small, grimy place. It looks like it's been converted from a wood store. Rats run across the floor, and the customers at the tables look haggard and tired, as if just smelling the air is draining them. Damn. By the bar, a stooped and hunched innkeeper wipes his beer mugs with a filthy handkerchief. All right, uh, Jerry, the musician's over here, which is the person we want to talk to. So, I mean, we're gonna go hang out with them, obviously. How many backflips can you actually do? I used to be able to do one. I definitely can't do that anymore. You look for Jira, but eventually, it is he who spots you, waving from a particularly dark corner of the inn. Come and sit with us. We've got food to share and company. Sit, but don't eat. Sit, reject the Why would I reject the offer? This guy's been nothing but kind to me. Why would I be like, no, fuck you. I'm going to sit. Thank you. You follow him to his table and sit down with three others that you recognize from the performance at the fair earlier. Their table is spread with, uh, delicacies. Fried hill fox feet, curried ball eye beans, and a thin green plant in oil that might be stewed grass. You eat greedily. So, how have you enjoyed your day in Kare? This city is filthy. Jira looks at his friends and they all laugh. <laughs> it is! But it is no one's fault. Everyone who lives here generates just as much mess as everyone else. One of the dancers, a tall, thin woman with a thoughtful expression, says, The problem is the poverty. Everyone is so poor. There's no one poor enough to clean the streets. Jira introduces his friend with a gesture. This is Almira. She's a dancer, but don't let that fool you. She's a thoughtful soul, if ever there was one. Almira nods her head. The only choice is poop water. Yeah, they're pumping poop water from the river and drinking it and pretending it's beer. That's not that's not good. All right, greeting. Almira smiles once and then heads back, turns back to her food. Jira crunches on a battered skunk bear toe. So, are uh, you staying here tonight? Yeah. For free. Yeah, I go, yeah. And then I look at him and I kind of cock my head to the side. For free. I just look at this guy. I'm like, for free. The guy's in like, come on, man. He nods. You're a brave man. I don't know many as would risk the beds 
at the heated reaver, or whatever this place is called. The owner makes good rat bone fritters, but he's a few giblets short of a casserole. <laughs> a few giblets, well, a few giblets, a few giblets short of a casserole. Where should I stay? Now, the other inn isn't bad, though I hear that Vic tends to scoop up the drunks. He nods meaningfully. All right, let's get some info. Who is he? Vic? I wouldn't say Vic was a good man to know. Or rather, there's many who know him and wish they didn't. Vic's a bad man. Head of the slave ring and looking to be head of a lot more, or so I hear. Almira agrees. They say he intends to overrun the council. That's impossible. But if he's planning it, I suspect he has a trick up his sleeve. What kind of trick? I have no idea. But Vic is a very clever man, indeed, and not afraid to work in league with sorcerers and the darker arts. Jira tries to lighten the tone, raising a toast with his mug. I need to find a blind beggar, one of the nobles. Jira looks blank. You might find such a man somewhere in Kare. You might find a hundred such. Hope you know what your beggar looks like, because otherwise how would you know you had the right one? It's late. We should be going. Almira nods and takes his hand. Arm in arm, they bid you farewell and leave the inn. All right, you march over to the bar. The innkeeper stands up as straight as he can to greet you. How is trade here? The man peers at you. Trade? This is a docks and I sell beer. Trade is the same as it's always been. I know the city is supposed to be going to the dogs and falling apart, but I don't believe it. People are always saying that. But they're still in here most nights, drinking their beer. How much is food? We're out of food, I'm afraid. He points to a group in one corner. Those lot ate everything. Musicians. They're always hungry, but good for drinking. Oh, no, I did eat. I already did eat. Never mind. I, I ate all the food. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, oh, man, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day. It's like, I just ate. I literally just ate all their food. And I'm coming looking for more? I'm the problem. I'm one of the musicians. I was part of their group. Do you have rooms? The innkeeper nods and smiles a wide, almost wicked smile. We do. Eston Kare, if I say so myself. People who stay here never stay anywhere as good again. Four gold pieces. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's a weird way to Why would you... That's weird. That was a weird way to say that. I'm gonna sleep outside. I'm gonna go sleep in the water. Yeah, I'm out of here. No, I don't... No. I was specifically told not to stay here by the musicians. They literally said, don't stay here. He was like, hey, don't sleep there. This place is fucking dump. Don't sleep there. I'm, I'm gonna listen to him. I'm not sleeping here. You walk back out to the docks. All right, uh, back to the docks. You're running out of options. Kare is renowned city as thieves and villains and has not earned that reputation for nothing. To sleep outside is to invite disaster. Instead, you seat yourself by the edge of the fat, slug-like Shibaji River, where the air is by turns fresh and stomach-churningly rancid, both of which should help you to stay awake through the long watches of the night. Oh, I'm not going to sleep. You sit watching the river as it creeps past. Today has been a successful day, and you've made progress towards learning the lines of the Northgate spell. After a while, you notice a light on the far bank. Uh, let's watch it. It is a lantern. For a while, it moves forward and backwards, then is joined by several more. Voices call to one another. They're looking for escapers, but escaping from what you cannot tell. As dawn breaks, one calls, Vic will be pleased. Clear night tonight. That name again. Landragor's friend. The men disappear as the sun begins to rise. Your long vigil has left you tired out, but still in one piece. I got the health back. As the sun breaks over the rooftops of Lower Kare, the city looks clean and bright, like a stone polished to a shine by a fast-flowing river. The effect lasts for a beautiful moment, and then the people of Kare begin to stir, opening their windows to throw out their slop, shouting and cursing at each other as they do so. <laughs> that's so... The word slop. That's like one of my... That's one of my favorite words, can I just tell you? The word slop is, is just... It has so much weight behind it. It can be used as... As an insult, it can be used as a, a means of, of like, of of, 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 of endearment, right? Oh, what, what, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna serve me this slop? I said that's not endearment. That's fucking horrible. That's really insulting. It's only as an insult. 
Oh, hey, yeah, give me, give me some of that. Imagine calling something slop at a dinner. It'd be like, dude, what the fuck did you just call my cooking? Oh, so what I have here is I have a pan-seared salmon. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big salmon guy. And I have uh, broccolini, uh, very, very lightly torched uh, to a nice crunch on the outside. Yeah, give me some of that slop. Okay, the effect lasts for a beautiful moment. Then the people come out. The city is stirring again. Uh, now we're going to head for the bridge. The market traders begin to set up their stalls, fighting and threatening each other to get the spots closest to the ships. A few sly types, probably pickpockets, begin to prowl the shadows between the stands. Uh, I should buy breakfast. You wander the stalls looking for something to eat and find a stand selling bomba bread for two gold pieces. The smell is quite nourishing. I definitely need it. You buy a slice of the bread. It is pleasantly filling with a sweet, meaty texture. You thank the woman at the stall, then head over to the river to wait for the bridge to be lowered. After a while, a grizzled old man arrives and unlocks a small booth by the harbor bridge. He goes inside and closes the door behind him. Meaty bread? Yeah, it means when you pull it open, you get the steam that comes out and it's really chunky and, and like fleshy on the inside. I know what that, I know, I know what they're, I know what they're talking about. You sit down outside the booth to wait for the man to lower the harbor bridge. After a while, something happens. The old man leaves his booth and goes over to a contraption on the waterfront. He begins to heave and wind an ancient winch. He seems to be quite hard work. He's trying to move the whole weight of the bridge single-handedly. That's the way that Hannibal Lecter would describe meat. <laughs> you get to your feet and go over to help the man out. Ah, oh, get off! You'll break it! Um, okay. Don't help him. You let the man struggle, happy to let him be stubborn. Sweat beads on his forehead, and he heaves and puffs as he works. But eventually the bridge clunks down into place. You salute the man cheerfully and get to your feet. You cross the bridge over the Jajabi River, which runs like a slime trail through the center of the city. Oh, That's fucking gross. Andy Funny Voices? You said that wrong. Andy Funny Voices. No, 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 no. Excuse me. Let me, I gotta correct you. That's Funny Voice Andy. Andy Funny Voices? You flipped it. You gotta get... Come on. You gotta get it right. Funny Voice Andy. Come on. <laughs> Andy Funny Voice... I love that. That's my favorite comment of the week. That's so... I love that wording. Time that person up for five seconds. Uh, you've reached the banks of Upper Kare. The buildings here are not as grand as on the south side of the river. They're in much better condition. Fewer people live on this side, away from the fields and the hills. But those that do are richer. They are also most likely more dangerous. But of course, it is on this side of the city that the north gate stands. You follow the road away from the river towards the fork in the road. Okay, we need to go down here. And I don't know if we can get there from here. I think it's impossible. Maybe it's not. If we go here and then down, maybe. Let's try it. Yep, the sun is rising over the streets of Upper Kara. A few creatures roam this way and that, unaware that they have walked these streets in just this fashion once before. In one corner, a spring bubbles with fresh water. Oh, I remember this. Drink it. You cup your hand in the water and drink a mouthful. It is fresh and invigorating, as though the water was enchanted. Okay, move on. We gotta go down. There we go. Alright, let's make our way down to the ruins. Where's the water coming from? That's, I don't ask that question. We don't ask that question. Got a lot of stamina now. You turn right, heading away from the city wall. A sign points towards Fireview Square. You pass large houses that have the aspect of official places of business. One is marked with the clawed fist of a money lender. An elven woman is just leaving. She looks quite worn out already, this early in the morning. You stop the woman with a gesture. She looks up at you in some surprise. Uh, you seem distraught. What's, what's this building? The woman looks at you in some surprise, as though she thinks your question must be a joke. It's a money lender. Though why they call themselves that, I don't know. She gulps back a sob. What happened? Did they, did they turn it down? She looks at you, her, her narrow eyes wide. Oh, stranger, you have no idea. I'll help you. What do you need? She pulls a face. You? Why would you do that? I cannot pay you. I'm sure you can guess. Well, may wait, maybe you know some... I just love the information, right? Perhaps you can help me. I'm new to Kare. Is that so? Then maybe... Maybe you'll need a guide. 
I don't want to guide. I don't want to guide. I travel alone. I don't want to guide. It's a dangerous city full of traps. A friendly hand wouldn't do you harm, would it? No. No, no. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust a single person. I, I don't want... Guys, I don't want to get, like, clubbed. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, come this way. Down this... Down this alley. And there's a guy I got fucking clubbed in the back of the head by some fucking thief. I don't want to do that. That's happened to us, like, at least once or twice so far. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oops, I, oh, I bumped into you and took, like, three items. All right. I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you think? Do we want a guide? Do we want someone to travel with us? Or no? So the poll will be one for yeah. Oops. Well, we're doing it. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Very well. She smiles. The first true smile you've seen on her face. Very good, stranger. I'll be happy to help you if I can for a fee. Where do you want to go? Oh. Oh, shit. She actually might help. I need to find a beggar in the ruins. She nods. The Fallen Quarter. That's very easy to find, if you can avoid the traps. She nods, clearly pleased. <laughs> Take me there or I'll kill you. What? Like, I pull the, a sword out? Well, I'm not going to threaten. No, I'm not going to threaten. We can't be this, like, psycho that starts a con- This, is hap this has happened I've, in my last playthrough, I remember this. Is getting halfway through a conversation and then throwing a rock at someone. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, I I'm new in town. I'm the Analander. What's your name? Oh, I'm the great sage of, uh, of the, of the Western Ruins. Oh, interesting. Can you help me? Sword comes out, stick it at their, ne at their neck. Like, wh why even start the conversation? If you're going to just threaten to kill somebody. Oh, yeah, like, I'm enjoying my time. We're having a good time around this campfire. I'm going to craft a fireball and just lob it in the air above me and then run. Why? Well, we, we, no. I'm going to, we're going to do what we did. And how much do you charge? She sizes you up for a moment. Four gold pieces. Half now, half later. That's the way we do this. Half now, half later. I'll give you yeah, up. Fine. Half now, half later, you suggest. The woman shrugs. That's fair. She holds out a palm and you give her two gold pieces. She smiles. Very well, then. She gestures down the street. Okay. What's your name? Before we begin, tell me your name. You can call me Mish. She nods. It's good to meet you, stranger. This way. She heads off along the street. I'm telling you, we're, we're going to get clubbed in the head. Uh, you feel the round, painful edge of a bowling pin strike the back of your skull. Um, this is, I'm going to get clubbed. The alley gets wider and passing a long building on the left, which seems to be full of children. An orphanage, Mish tells you, full of ne'er-do-wellers. On the step, a lanky man sits with his eyes firmly closed. Wait, aren't, isn't this the, um, isn't, isn't this the area where the people, they open their eyes? Should we, we, we should get, we gotta get the fuck out of here, right? Yeah, these, I think this is the, isn't this the group of people that have, like, the fire eyes? Yeah, we're getting out of here. Ignore. Yeah, yeah, we have, we got a place to be. We have a guide that's already walking. If we stop, we're gonna lose the guide. We're not stopping. We are not, we're not stopping for anything, by the way. You're back on the approach to Fireview Square. You see that? Mish says, pointing to the monument at the center of the square with a curious gleam in her eye. That's one of the great treasures of Kare. If you step inside, you're granted a vision of the whole city from above, so you can see where you need to go. Once again, you stand in the plaza of the Red Eyes, the heart of this half of the city port. In all directions, roads lead off, some no doubt to the houses of nobles and others directly into danger. On the other side of the square, the main road continues on through a low arch, a thousand other alleyways lead off in all directions into Upper Kare. Yeah, we're not sticking around here. Yeah, I'm gonna get teleported. <laughs> no, we're just going. Lead on. You gesture for your guy to lead the way. Through here, she says, waving towards the arch at the far side of the square. Right? Here it comes. Here comes the... I'm gonna... Are you sure? You ask, surprised by the direction. The woman smiles. Of course I'm sure. Do you want to find the beggar or don't you? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. What is this? I forget what this is. What is this thing? What does this do to you? Follow. You follow your guide through the archway. You follow Mish between the narrow buildings until you reach a fork. 
to the left, the road continues towards... Oh, I thought it wanted me to stand in the middle and get... I don't know. Okay. Uh, while the right leads to the shorter street. In the center of the fork is a great bronze statue with some kind of pot at its feet. I remember this. Oh my. Look at how much gold there is. She steps towards the statue. No, 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 no. Don't do that. No, no, no. Lead on, lead on. Don't go over there. Don't go over there. This thing, I made a goblin go try to take money from it and it cut the goblin in half. No, 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 no. Don't lead on. Don't do not. Let's go, you say, waving to Mish to start walking. Of course, she says. But you can see she's looking at the base of the statue where a pot sits, containing several gold pieces. She begins to head down the road to the right. Uh, this way to the beggar. Is she going to die? Was that a different statue? Oh, but this can't be good either. I uh, follow her. You follow her, but then at the last possible moment, she dives to one side and grabs an armful of gold from the bowl by the statue's foot. That'll teach those money lenders to not pay out, she cries, stuffing nearly 20 gold pieces into her pocket. Oh, God damn it. From somewhere behind her, there is a noise like thunder of something moving into life. Quick, <laughs> put the money back. Put it back. We were just kidding. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It was a joke. Look for the noise. I gotta draw the sword. We can't run. Quickly, put the money back. She's an idiot. Leave her. Abandon her. No, this is a new party member. Run, run, run. Pray to the ape. I'm pulling the sword out. You draw your sword, expecting attack. But Mish only laughs. That won't be much good, she says, pointing behind her at the statue. The guardian of the gold, she shouts over the noise of hissing pistons and grating metal as the statue steps forwards. Why do you think I led you here? With that, she sticks a single gold piece into your money pouch. The statue comes for the last person to thieve. Good luck. You'll need it. She races away but turns in the mouth of the alleyway to shout something. Here comes the club. Listen. It's got a weak spot on one of the legs, she calls back. And to find the beggar, you need to go to the wasteland, but beware the mill! And she blows you a kiss <laughs> and rushes away. Well, we did get some info. Uh, okay, you don't have time to be angry. Looking up, you see the statue's right arm sweeping down towards you. Leap left. You jump left, straight into the path of the club. We got clubbed. Actually got fucking clubbed. It just took, like, 12 minutes to happen. Which sends you flying backwards. Picking yourself up quickly, you see the bronze giant has leapt from its pedestal and is advancing towards you. You adjust the grip on your sword. You rush forward, dodging the statue's stamping foot. But when your blow lands on the metal, it only sends a painful shockwave up your arm and does no damage to the creature at all. The statue's leaning back for another swipe at you. You'll have to find this thing's weak spot, if it has one, or else you do not stand a chance. One of the legs... In the milliseconds available, you scour the creature for scratches, blemishes, anything that might suggest a chink in the armoring. You race forward towards the creature's left leg and spy a small metal plate. Twisting your sword around in your hand, you drive it into the crack and begin to lever the panel open. The giant flails this way and that, trying to shake you loose, but you are determined. And finally, the plate flies open. A blast of hot gas ejects from the statue. It sways and then topples face down into the street. I'm alive. You gasp with relief and take a moment to recover your breath. You've survived, but your elven guide has disappeared. Will all the statues money? You see, we don't care about spelling, right? Who cares? It's with all the statues. Who gives? Who cares? I told you, it's 2022. Nobody gives a shit. I know what you were trying to say. I'll just re-say it. It's fine. I don't care. Who cares? All right, so we got to go down here. Back to the house. Oh, okay. So we're going to go back to the house of Vlada and then chase the gnome, right? And then go down. Side street. Uh, could we get there from here too? We no, we definitely have to go straight down. Uh-huh. You follow the short street towards the building with a sign that says the gambling halls of Vlada. Lots of creatures are going in and the place seems quite busy. There's a short queue to get in. Yeah, we have to go in and we have to chase the gnome out the back. You join the queue and after a few minutes, you are, you are allowed inside. Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to go to the casino. I have to go through the casino. I got to walk through the casino and out the back door. So, I mean, I may, I could, maybe I'll set it up. Maybe I'll put up the 20 bucks in a machine or something and that's fine. 
I'm just trying, but I'm not staying here. I'm just getting, I'm going through it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so here we go. I just, I'm just walking through. Uh, give her my gold. All right, I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna play for one game. But wait a minute, I gotta, hold on. Am I gonna lose my money? All right, wait, 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 wait. I gotta, okay, look at the tables. Picking up, uh, wait, 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 wait. No, I can't, because if, because uh, the gnome, right? No, I don't want to do this. I'll play one game of a high wager. All right, we're going to play the, we'll do one 10 gold bet, and then we're out. Let's go. Where's the innkeeper? This is one, this is 10 gold, just one 10 gold bet in a matter. Okay, so I got two threes. No, two, uh, it's, I have literally everything. I have like a, we'll do one two. Two ones, okay? Three ones. That means he has to have, to do, do four ones, say it. Oh, you are in trouble. That means you, that, call it, there's no way you have three ones. I win. See, we're just going to play. I'm going to just sweep this guy, and then we're going to get out of here. I got two, let's say two threes, because that's what I have. No, two twos. Two, all right. You've got two, two fours, three fours. No, no, he's, he's done. Call it. Thank you. Why does the four confuse you so much? Because on a regular, on a regular six-sided die, the five looks like this. It has that kind of same pattern. So my brain just keeps saying this is a five. Because it's got that same, you know, the, in the middle, off the, you know what I'm saying? It's, it looks like a five. On a regular six-sided die. Okay. So you only, he only has three dice. So I can really make this, I can put this guy in a lot of trouble. I'm going to say two ones. No, two twos. Let's really just ruin it. Two th Threes. I'm gonna say four. Let's do this. Because the chances of him having one of these are pretty high. Call it. You definitely have one. You have to have one. Yeah, you definitely have one. Whatever. Oh! Oh, really? One? I think there are two twos. Oh, well, that's interesting. I think there are three ones. Call it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's a, that's a horrible, horrible hand to have against you. You lose. Stupid. I'm just kidding. Damn, that's another good one. All right, so let's do two twos again. Two threes. How many die? He has two die. Which means he probably has one. So if I if I have to call this and it's wrong, right? Okay, so that's assuming that he's saying that he has doubles, which no way. All right, all right that that was unlucky. Two threes. Don't call it. Yep, I win. All right, and then we cash out, and then we get out of here. Uh, there is one, 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 two. I, I think that there, there's two twos. Two is probably the only thing he has. Three twos. I'm sorry, buddy. What? Oh fuck! Wait a minute. I, 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 I didn't, I, I didn't know I had two twos. I thought I only had one. I thought I didn't know that was a two. I didn't. My brain just didn't make that a two. I thought I only had one two. I have to call it. Cause, I mean. No, I, I got caught here. I just have to hope he doesn't have it. I could just bluff it, but that's impossible because he he would have to call it anyways. I gotta see if he's bluffing. No, he wasn't. I that was my fault. I actually didn't um, realize I had that. All right, what do you got? One one. One. Three. <laughs> I, I pretty much am guaranteed to win this. Two, yeah, I'm guaranteed. There's not when you have one die versus two die, you it's almost impossible to win. There we go. All right. Ten chips. Change. Get out. I'm done. Cash out. Bang. Twenty six. Okay, so wait, how do how do I get to the ruins? 
down here and up? Could I go up and then this way? Let's find out. Up and left, I think, yeah. Uh, leave the square. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Let's go. In the alley. Do you like flour or corn tortillas? Well, that's a, a very loaded question because it depends on what's in them. Corn tortillas are good for, uh, carne asada. I love, like, a carne asada and a corn tortilla and I fold it up nice and small. Pick it up, just... Uh, flour tortilla is great for burritos. Um, yeah, okay. You choose a random alleyway on the right-hand side of the square and slip into the shadow between the tall buildings. The houses either side are well-built and well-defended. There are iron railings on the windows, and some even have arrow slits and portcullises. One household has a dug a moat across its front door. Outside one building, a tall man stands with a grappling hook. Okay. You hang back and watch as he swings his grappling hook twice. Aiming for one of the windows on the floor above. The hook misses and clatters to the street below. And the man curses before gathering up the rope for another try. Approach him. It's Batman? You stride over to the man as he swings his hook once more. Greetings! You begin with a respectful nod. The man turns to you. Stranger, I'm in a terrible fix. The man gathers the rope for another swing. He's clearly tiring. Uh, what's the problem? I've been locked out. This is my home, and I've lost my key. But I've got a terrible throw, as you can probably see. The man throws again and misses again. Um, where'd you get the grappling hook? Oh, would you believe it? I found it. Near an old well in the wasteland. I was wandering about there feeling sorry for myself, and I chanced across it. Bullshit. You a thief? Are you a guard? Answer the question. You reply coolly. Listen, if I were a thief, <clears throat> do you not suppose I would be better at getting this accursed thing to land on the sill? To demonstrate his point, he swings again with considerable effort and once more misses, ducking to one side to avoid the look at he as it, the d ducking to avoid the hook as it falls back. Uh, uh, the man gives up. He winds up the rope around his shoulder and then cups his hand to his mouth. Esme, will you just open the door and let me in? For a moment, nothing happens. Then a bucket of slop is thrown out over the man. He stands dripping in muck. Who is that? You ask from a safe distance away. Take my advice, stranger. Never marry an elephant. They may have lovely eyes, but they are thoroughly untrustworthy. He stalks away up the alley. Time for you to move. Well, we failed that, whatever that was. Well, I don't know, the guy's out there with a grappling hook thrown it at random windows. What, am I going to trust this guy? Hey, yes, let me see that. I'll do it. And then I do, I go, poom, shoot the grappling hook out into the window, break the window, and the guards come and club me in the back of the fucking head. Is We've seen that song and dance too many times. The street is falling into disrepair around you. Something has blighted this region of the city. Even the trees and the gardens behind the mansions have turned black where they stand. The only greenery is the moss on the stone walls. There are no rats scurrying underfoot, and only spiders roost in the rooftops. You pass a particularly grand house, its doors locked with a heavy iron chain. Look at it. There is a metal S bolted beneath one gable. Perhaps it's an owner's mark. Perhaps it is there to stop the wall falling out onto the street. There's a ringing noise from down the alley. A hooded creature with a bell around his neck is approaching in shuffling steps. Oh boy. There's always jig. <laughs> well, we don't know what this is. I could do sauce. Let's do sauce. Or sap. Sauce is probably better. Because what if this is not a danger? Sense danger. cast a spell and a calm voice enters your mind, it tells you that the house before you is empty of anything important, even of ghosts, but that the creature approaching is quite deadly. And the voice fades away. You cast the spell, pulling out your little flute and playing a merry tune. The figure in the cloak stops suddenly, and then in awkward and painful steps begins to dance. The sight is macabre and cruel. And you hear the creature wheezing with the effort of every movement. 
Oh no, this is like bad. Uh, keep playing? It said that the, the creature was deadly. Does that mean that they were going to attack or they're just actually, I don't know. You show no mercy, continuing the spell until the creature is quite exhausted. It begins to scream in a human voice from its terrible injuries. When the enchantment finally fades, the creature can barely find the strength to crawl away. The creature with the bell around its neck passes you without looking up and shuffles away. But what, uh, the, Sus said that the creature was dangerous. Do it again. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. You cast a spell pulling out your little flute and play a merry tune. The sound is cheery on the desolate street. Nothing more occurs. Now nah, the creature's gone. Let's go to the house. The door to the house is locked with a heavy padlock chain. You can try to pry it open with the tip of your sword, but achieve nothing. Well, let's drop it open. You cast the spell over the heavy chain and it tumbles to the ground. Enter the house. You slip through the wide doors into the old empty house. An empty mansion. You push open the doors and step inside the dark house. It is a mansion on a grand scale, larger even than the abandoned house you explored on the lower side of Kare. There are at least three floors and two great doors leading off to wings on either side of the entrance hall. From the back of the house comes a voice. The Lord is not home. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I know. The figure shambles forward, resolving itself out of the darkness into a tall ogre wearing the livery of a manservant. His eyes are tightly closed. Lord Shinva is not at home. Please leave. Lord Shinva is dead. Yeah, Sus said there wasn't anybody in here. Lord Shinva is dead. Isn't he? Indeed. He will not be returning for some time. Um... Returning. Is he not dead? Not so dead that he might not yet be revived. But I hold out very little hope. My service will continue regardless, of course. As he speaks, you notice a flash of metal from his neck. Some kind of collar. Made of a strange, dull, colored metal. And the collar is covered up by his shirt. I must now ask you to step outside. Gesturing towards the door. Push past the creature. You elbow past the creature, meaning to explore the house. In return, the creature opens his eyes, and a searing red flash burns your arm. I regret to inform you that I am part red-eye. Then he grabs you by the burnt arm and hauls you out of the house onto the street. The creature with the bell has gone. A narrow alley opens up to your left, slipping between the buildings. God damn it. That's bullshit. Rewind. Rewind. <laughs> I can't. Dude, just start killing everybody. No, I can't just kill everybody. Remember Korga? Korga hated us. Um, I'm gonna go down this way. Because we didn't explore this. The buildings are thinning out. Through a gap between roofs, you can make out a tall, crooked steeple some way away. Like a finger pointing up towards the heavens. A dark shape sits at its very tip. As you watch, the shape seems to grow wide, then flatten once more. As though it had opened and closed. A bird, perhaps. Or simply a flag, draping downwards in the still air. Okay, we're looking for Theta. We need the spell line. Once again, you are emerging from the alley into a wide area of wasteland. Once this was a busy city district, but now it looks as though a hurricane has leveled it. Nothing stands higher than head height. A few staircases lead to nowhere, and in some places a door still stands. Plants grow from every crevice and crack as though someone had poured green paint over the whole scene. Things are constantly moving and shuffling between the leaves. The road, such as it is, is quickly smothered by piles of wreckage. There are lots of other ways to pick your way through. One possible route leads up and over the side of a broken down house. Another passes by what might have once been a mill. You would have to climb over the mill wheel to continue this way. We were told to avoid the mill. Right? Didn't somebody say, don't go near the mill? That was the guide, right? <clears throat> yeah, they said that, they, no, they said to go to the mill. Did they lie? Yeah, while she was running away, she was like, don't go to the mill, you're going to get fucked up. Something like that. Look at the broken house. 
The house has been sliced like a many-layered cake, showing the floors that were once inside. Opened rooms have been stripped of their color by the wind and light, and of their possessions by a decade or more of scavengers. But there are still hints that this place was once a family home. The hooks in the ceiling above the hearth have marks notched on a ground floor pillar that suggest the height of a growing child. Children. Height of growing children. I'm going to climb the house. Look at the mill. Who would build a mill out here so far from the river? Still, there is a gigantic mill wheel lying on its side in the path. Despite the state that the building next to it is in, the wheel itself seems perfectly intact and has not even lost its perfect circular shape. Um, we were specifically told to avoid the mill. So, um, oh, it's, it's a portal trap. That's right. That's right. A perfect circle on the ground. Climb the broken house. You clamber up the fallen rubble to the roof of the broken building. From here, you get a clear view across the rest of the wasteland. It stretches for a mile or two and will take about an hour to cross on foot. And at its far side, a tall iron fence thick with ivy slices across the land. Perhaps to keep the people of the wasteland out. Or to keep whatever is beyond the fence in. In the distance, you see dark shapes moving across the sky. Climb down the other side of the house. You make your way down the far side of the building and look back onto the path, which soon forks. I, this is actually really important because I don't know where this, with, where this person is. Let's try right. Okay, you follow the path to the right between broken foundations and cracked streets. On one side, a roof sticks half out of a sand dune. On the other, a front door lies flat on the ground as though leading to a hidden cellar. Then the path comes to a building that amidst all this destruction is still standing. Its door is closed and its stone walls seem completely intact. You try the door and find that it falls open at the slightest touch. I'm going to the house. You might be in the house. The house consists of a single room with a large table and a large chair. And in the far corner, a sealed box. Everything seems in good repair. The wood looks waxed and polished and the hinges on the box are free of rust. From the doorway, you stop and look around. And that's when you notice the foot sticking out from under the table. <laughs> uh... Look at the foot. You go over to look at the foot. It is clawed and a dull shade of gray-green. It is about the size of your head and sticks out from under the low table. This house feels dead. Even the air inside seems not to move. Did I just kick the foot? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prod the foot. Reaching forward with the walking cane you found in the house. <laughs> The one opportunity to use the cane is here. I take the cane out and go poke, poke. That's the only thing the cane has been used for. <laughs> nothing happens. All right, poke it again. Feeling more confident now, you prod it once more. Still nothing. Seems like this creature is either very asleep or very dead. Okay. Go for the box. No longer concerned about the creature, you head over to the box and lift the lid. Inside are a series of small round stones, carefully carved. Lift out a stone. You pick out one of the stones at random and lift it from the box. It isn't heavy, but it is exquisitely smooth. Not quite round with a dimple at the top and a deeper pit near the top. In fact, you realize as you turn it over in your hand, it is carved in the shape of an apple. Looking in the box, you see other carved foodstuffs. Apples, bread rolls, goat's cheese, a ham. Each has been almost perfectly chiseled into a shape. This is the kid at the fair. You search through the box, hoping to find something of value. Or else something to explain the purpose of the collection. But you discover nothing more. Turning away, your eyes fall on the other side of the table, where the head of the creature lies. The face is clearly stone. The eyes are stone. The open mouth is stone. It is a statue of a Sven, or else it once was a Sven. In its hand, you see it holds a stone shovel. You peer at the shovel. It is a wide blade, good for heavy digging. This creature was a gardener, perhaps or a farmer, or more likely given his lonely outpost near the necropolis, the city grave digger. But now he is solid stone. Such things are not impossible. Perhaps he buried a wizard's lover. A day too soon, perhaps. You step back outside into the dying sunlight. 
You make your way between blasted walls and weed-encrusted rubble. There is a constant movement in the corner of your eyes. Rats scurrying to hide under the stones and the cracks. The path turns around a large stone fountain, which has toppled over on one side, revealing an empty well leading down into the earth. We don't. I don't want to go in the sewer. Move on. I'm not going in the sewer. All right, the edge of the wasteland. Did we miss it? Oh, hold on. After a while, another path joins this one. Looking back along it, you see a toppled steeple. A track climbs the rise at your back towards a low hovel. This is the far end of the wasteland. Ahead, you make out a line of tall, dark trees. So, hey, do all your jokes come from this game? I would say, like, maybe 10% of all the jokes I've ever made. Maybe, maybe like, 7 Maybe 7% of everything I've ever said has been uh, directly from the text of this game. No, maybe like 4% of everything I've ever said. Such as, I don't know, I made it up. I'm just, I don't know. It's not even true. All right, you climb the rise towards the hovel. It is merely a tent pitched in a clearing. Guy ropes held down by rubble. You stand and hold your breath, but you hear nothing from inside. Perhaps it is unoccupied. Certainly it can't contain much. It's going... Aha! Did we find him? You step into the shade of the tiny hovel and your eyes widen. The room inside is lined, floor to ceiling with trinkets, knickknacks, bric-a-brac, and other miscellaneous stuff. Some is piled up on the shelves, some hang from the ceiling, even more lean against the walls. There are weapons, pottery, jewelry, domestic objects, magical items, and so on. Oh, it's not the right person. Who is this? Sitting cross-legged on the floor in the midst of all this mess is a small bearded gnome who rubs his hands and greets you as you come in. I have come to rob you. You know what? Fuck him. Right? Fuck him. You know what I'm saying? Should I? I've come to rob you. I have come to rob you, you announce, amazed that no one has done it already since he lives out here clearly undefended. Very well. As you can see, I can't stop you. But you wouldn't rather trade? I'll trade your life for what you own. <laughs> trade would be acceptable. <laughs> Imagine, like, hey, this is a stick-up. This is a robbery. Oh, but I mean, we could trade, too. Yeah, yeah, you know, that works. I, I'm more into that. You're right. Yeah, that's acceptable to me. Taking mercy on the tiny, scrawny creature. Oh, good. I'm very glad to hear that, as you might imagine. He pats the ground beside him. Let's see if we can do a little bartering. As you can probably tell, I have no interest in money. The gnome gestures around his little room. There's clearly a lot to choose from, but the items which stand out are a pot of beeswax, a bag of goblin's teeth, and a compass, whose needle quivers in a direction which is close to, but not actually north. What would you like? The gnome asked. I don't want any more teeth. What's the compass? It's not a normal compass. Instead, it'll point you to where it thinks you need to go. I'm afraid it has a mind of its own, and it isn't always correct. And it probably won't work in the countryside outside of Kare either. So I'd understand if you don't want it. Um, well, we're, but we're like on our way out of Kare. That's Jack Sparrow's compass. It's not, I, that's not going to do anything. I, honestly, that's not going to work. I don't need any more teeth. I could use the beeswax. He said it's not going to work outside Kare. We, we, we're at the end of our Kare journey very soon here. Teeth or we riot. He could be lying. All right, I'll take the compass. Sounds intriguing, you reply, not putting the compass down. A anything else? Um, do I have beeswax? Oh, no, okay, I have beeswax. Yeah, guys, I have eight goblin teeth. I don't need any more. Um, no, that's enough. You say, standing back. All done? Very good. You took one of mine, so I've taken one thing of yours. I'm very quick. You probably didn't notice me doing it. Good day. The gnome gestures towards the door for you to leave. Wait, what did he take? What did you take? The gnome looks surprised. Well, really, I have no idea. I'm a kleptomaniac. <laughs> that should be fairly obvious. And what's more, I couldn't see into your pack when I was taking it, could I? But I'm very fair, and I took exactly the right amount of things, so we're all square. What did he take? What did he take? Am I missing something? Skullcap, wig, bone, sun jewel, 
Badge of the Noble, 26 gold. Tinderbox, walking cane. What did I, what did he take? He took the chain. He took the silver chain. He took the flute? No, he took the chain. He took my silver chain. A magical silver chain that acts like a snake for a fucking dumbass broken compass? I'm attacking this guy. Give me my stuff. I'm sorry, that's really quite impossible. I don't know where I put it or what it is. You should be pleased with what you stole from me and be on your way. Oh, that's why he's got all this shit, because he, he doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> Take something else. I just start grabbing stuff. No, 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 that's not, I, I actually probably should get out of here. Because if I take something, if I just start grabbing shit, he's going to grab stuff from me and be like, well, you took something of mine, so I took something of yours. I wonder if I, should I just attack him? Threaten him. Give me my things or I'll squeeze you to death. For a moment, you seem to see something move in the corner of your eye. Look here. I can't help it. And in all this talking about it, I've gone and stolen something else from you. So really, I do advise you to just leave. Kill this mug. Kill him. You give into your worst intentions and strangle the gnome where he stands. But with him dead, you'll never find your property. You do a search of the... <laughs> you do a search of the hut, but nothing turns up while all the time outside the sun is setting. Eventually you give and you head out of the hovel. You return back along the path. What the fuck? Hold on. What else did... I just strangled him to death? What did he take? <laughs> oh, he took the wig. No, I need that. I genuinely need that wig. I need it. I genuinely need that. That's the thing that lets me talk to animals. Are you not going to let me rewind that? <laughs> well, and by the way, why did I put my hands around his neck? I strangled him to death? Why wouldn't I just kill him with my sword? Why would I choke him to death? I put my bare hands around his neck and squeeze him to... Wait, did I say that? I did say that, didn't I? <laughs> Give me my things or I'll squeeze you to death. Why was I in the mood to strangle someone? I have swords and magical spells and why would I... I don't need to strangle someone. There's no reason for this. I have magic. I have lightning bolts and that's what you get. It's a free rewind. I know re rewinding is, I know it's, a, it's polarizing. I know, right? Do you live with your decisions and just take it as the game goes or do you, no, no, no. My finger was still there so I could still do it. I think there's an equal amount of both that make the game fun, right? Because there's been a lot of cases where I have not rewound. It's like, no, we got to fucking live with that. It's, it is fun though to play this game. Uh, and you have to live with every decision. Although it's really hard to win, I will say. It's very difficult to win the game without doing it. All right, let's go back. Uh, we're just... Should I do what I did to get the compass and he takes the chain? Right? Oh, wait, wait, it might be random, though. Maybe I just don't even do this. What is, I'm going to leave. I'm not even going in here. No, nope, don't even bother. Uh, we're going to the steeple. Chat's a bunch of rewind Andes. Hey, by the way, we got him. This is definitely him. You make your way through the wasteland towards a church. Most of the building is in ruins, but a tall steeple still reaches for the sky. Circling the steeple are two dark shapes that look like enormous birds. At the foot of the church, a man dressed in rags is curled up asleep. Look at him. You stop and peer down to look at him. Could this be Theta, the blind beggar that you were told to find? His face is curiously familiar. You've definitely seen it somewhere before since you arrived in Kare. Although you have not seen any other beggars as filthy and smelly as this one. Is this the guy from the very beginning? We could have killed this person from the, in the beginning. Thomas, yeah. Well, I think we could have actually killed this guy. Uh, let's wake him. You reach down and wake him gently. At first he doesn't respond and you wonder if you are too late. But then he sits up sharply. Who's there? I, I'm under attack! I'm under attack! He rubs his eyes, then reaches out with a dirty fingertip to your face. Um, all right, let's take, take it, let's take it slow. One voice, Andy. No, sorry, it's Andy one voice. Get it right, or don't even say it. Um, wait, 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 okay, well, should I give him something? 
introduce myself. Greetings, you say. The beggar groans and grumbles. What did you wake me for? I can see in my dreams, you know. I Maybe that joke from the first game? For the first time you played? I'd rather stay there. You are Theta, noble of Kare. Do I jump this on him immediately? You are Theta, noble of Kare. You round on the beggar. You are Theta, seventh noble of Kare, are you not? The man looks absolutely terrified by the accusation. He begins to curl up around himself and scream. It seems quite a strong reaction. Then you see he is not looking at you, but past you. Oh shit, look up. You turn your attention skywards to see the two dark shapes are hurtling downwards, beating wide, leathery wings. They are the creatures you saw flying around the steeple. God cursed harpies! They come for me every time. Every coin I get, every apple, every stinking crust of bread. They come and they take it from me. What did I do to deserve such torment? Step in front of the beggar. You push the beggar back and stare up into the sky. I'm terrifying looking. The harpies are screaming down towards him. Ugly, dark-skinned creatures with sharp talons and their arms and legs coming to tear out what's left of his. Let's go. Gob. We got, I got plenty of goblin teeth. I got eight of these. Let's get a goblin, friend. You toss a goblin's tooth into the ground and cast a spell. A plume of smoke forms, and then, moment later, a goblin warrior stands in front of you. The beggar begins to shriek and scrabble back through the dust. No, to what? Why would I do? Turn the goblin on the harpies. You turn the goblin about to attack the harpies. The short creature jumps up and down, trying to stab the flying monsters, but they cackle and laugh before one finally snatches your little warrior into the air. They lift him high, well above the ruined steeple, then let go. Thankfully, the enchantment that has created him breaks before his body hits the ground, and he simply vanishes in mid-air. <laughs> They're so fucking useless. You know what? G Gob is really good to test stuff, right? You go first. Sending a goblin into a room, and they just get like instantly killed by a trap, and then you just walk around it. That's We've, we've done that a few times. Uh, There's such dog shit, though. They're so bad at everything else. All right, they come screaming for your neck. Uh, they only got five stamina, though, so I'm going to go full blast here. Got it. It flexes its long talons as it turns in the air once more. It's still fighting. All right, I got to pull back, I think. You think he'll go more than five? Yeah, he will. Oh, come, what the fuck was that? 0 0.1? Look out! They never give up, these harpies. They never give up. Full blast. Oh, that's fucking da That's awful. That's truly bad. I might have to do it. I'm going to do it again. That's actually terrible. The beggar holds onto his hat as his head. And the creature swoops low. Fuck. I'm dead. Oh, my God. This stupid thing. It's over. Still defending. I, oh, I can't hit it. We're going to do 5.0. Fuck you. We're going full blast. 6.5. One damage. This is so stupid because they're in the air. I should have just thrown a goddamn grenade in the air. Definitely coming in hard. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to do light because this, you don't have enough stamina to do anything. We're going to do two point. We're going to do 3.0. You got to be fucking kidding me. Huh? It's gonna okay, it's gonna defend. It circles out of reach. Defend again. It flies up to the roof of the old building. Okay, defend again. It wheels high into the air, screaming to the other. What? What the fuck? I thought he was high in the air. I didn't know he was down. What? It said he was, goes high into the air. The Harpy's eyes are on fire. Yeah, come in. 6.5. That's a huge, that's a huge hit. Huge, huge hit. It's going to go for another strike? Fine, do it. 2.8. I swear to God, man. All right, fuck you. We got one.
What's happening? Demands the beggar, but you order him to silence as an opening appears. You cut a side blow. The harpy hits the ground. It is a huge creature. As big as a bear, but the savage light in its eyes has gone dark. The beggar darts forward to jab it with his stick. But there's no time for celebration. The second creature is already searing down from the sky. Oh, God damn it. This is such a... This, the ape. Thank God for the ape. This one has a much bigger stamina pull. I gotta defend. Yep. That was a good play. Don't let him get you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, you just used a whole bar. I'm gonna go like... The creature hovers just a little out of reach. This is a defense scenario, right? Or just a little bit? Like 1.2.0? Yep. Okay, it wheels up and turns about ready to strike. Look out, he's going for your head. Eight. Got him. Okay, now we pull back. Because he's coming in with like probably like a five or a six. I could have done it, but it's all right. I got a bigger stamina pull now. It hangs in the air, a short way back. Claws grasping. What do you... Uh... What do you think? All in? 5.7. Got it. Two. Come on! It's gonna drop down. Defend. I, that was the right play. Alright, now we go all in. I get the kill right here. Got it. Thank God. That was a lot. Suddenly you reach out. You cleave the air with your blade with a final turn through the air. The harpy barrels over, then tumbles, striking the side of the church. As it hits the ground, a wall collapses, and the creature is buried beneath a slide of masonry. The beggar cheers and begins to dance. Alright, well, I'm glad we got a goblin, like, just, like, snatched up and dropped. The beggar creeps out from his hiding place and thanks you two or three times over. Give him back his badge. Wait, what? This is his badge. The one that we got... From the... I don't know where we got this, but this is his badge. I... I... Okay. I forgot we had this. You got it in that hidden room from the mansion. Oh, yeah. It was, it was his house, right? All right, here. Take your badge. Here. I have something of yours. You dig into your pack while Theta waits, cocking his head and listening to the sound of you rummaging through your things. Finally, you produce the badge and place it into his hand. He smiles as he accepts it. My stranger, thank you, but... He feels over the surface, trying to work out the shape. Then suddenly he drops it, as though it were scalding hot. That's not mine. Not anymore. I wish I'd never taken it in the first place. I won't take it again. He kicks at the badge and skitters away into the debris of the fallen church. Talk to him. Lord Theta, I'd like to talk to you. That is my name. I don't deny it. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you happily. Ever since the blindness struck me down, I've been tormented by those demons. And now they're dead. You have saved me. Or as much as I can be saved. That's his cane! Dude, we are ready for this conversation, by the way. This is the most prepared I think I've ever been for this conversation. Give him his walking cane. Here, I have something for you. You take his outstretched hand and place the walking cane into his grip. His fingers find its familiar shape and he leans quickly onto it with a sigh. My old friend. This saw me through the worst times when my eyes were failing. I hardly need it now, of course. To demonstrate, he spins around on the spot, gets his legs into a tangle, and sits down sharply, laughing. <laughs> but thank you, stranger. You are indeed kind. <laughs> the beggar shivers against a sudden breath of cold. The afternoon is waning. Evening is approaching already. Days are growing shorter. It's like that here, near the backlands. Tell me your spell line for the gate. Just cut right to the chase. That was a Willy Wonka moment. <laughs> Tell me your spell line for the gate. Please. Happily. I'm glad to be rid of it. It was... Uh... No, my memory is not as good as it was. Let me see. It was, uh... I'm... He racks his brain thinking for all he is worth. <laughs> Shit. 
Um, <laughs> hit him. <laughs> no, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. 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 Got it. By Korg's grace and something's pride. Oh, but well, I can't remember where the something was. <laughs> I'm starving. I'm so hungry. But you have no food you could offer him. Oh, come on, dude. Try to remember the rest of the line. He shakes his head. It's gone, I fear. It's gone, like my sight. It was the name of a god. One of the old gods. The god of pride, no less. And maybe you can find out elsewhere. You could ask Korga, the god of grace, for his help. He lives in a temple that way. He waves roughly northwards. Shit. Korga's not going to be happy that you killed the gnome. Wait, uh, did, does that still count? That doesn't still count, right? Do, I, have I killed anybody? No, be, let's be honest. I strangled a gnome. I did. I strangled a gnome with my bare hands and, and, and cut off his windpipe until he died. But we rewound that. Have I killed anybody in this playthrough here? I killed the council guards. Fuck. No! But was that in defense? No, that was Flanker went in and I went into. No, I need to feed... I have to feed him. I need to feed him. Where can I get food? Do I have that part of the line already? That's a good question. I don't... I don't have it. We'll, hold on, we'll see at the end of this conversation. Tell me the order of the lines. The order of the spell lines. Do you know it? No, no idea. Although I know my line came first. Okay. Tell me about Korga. Korga sees all and knows all. Suddenly the beggar grips your wrist and squeezes. But you risk your life if you talk to him. Remember, please, the left eye. That's how you start the left eye. What happened to your eyes? You take a moment to show some sympathy. What happened to your eyes? A black eye curse, and I know who cursed me. It was Sansus. Once he was a good ruler, fair and honest. He ruled Kare like a kind father looking after a cherished daughter. Nothing was too much effort. But he began to fear his other counselors. He thought we were plotting against him, ready to overthrow him. Were you? <laughs> Mulas was. As soon as Sansas gave Mulas one of the spell lines, he wanted them all. He wanted them for himself. So he could hold the city to ransom. Mulas used to be a blackmailer. <sighs> but I was loyal. And Sansas repaid me. Like this. He was weeping. You curse the beggar for his useless half-help. Then you look to the track ahead and take your leave of him. Your clues have been updated. God damn it. I just needed to have food. Where can I get food? I need to buy food. Where can I get food? I need to rewind to get food. Korg is not going to help me. I killed somebody in this re rewind. God damn it. Check the sewer. Check your notes on the spell order. Korg is grace. Wait, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. I already know it. Korg is grace. No, you don't? He gave you that part. What did he what did he not give me? By Korga's grace and someone's pride. Shit. Whose pride? Whose pride? The god of pride is who? We need to find out who the god of pride is. Shit. Oh no. Is it can we get it here? Korga, no, Korga's not the god of pride. Korga's the god of grace. You need to get it from Korga. Could I ask someone, ask the dead noble in the crypt? Uh, let's try that. Let's try that. Over here, right? Shitfuck doesn't know. Damn it. We're so close. I need literally one word to complete it. I've, I've never completed this. The path ends at a tall and ancient iron fence overgrown with weeds. Through the dense leaves, you can make out a wide area. Dotted with stones and small buildings and straight, somber trees. It's a necropolis of mausoleums and tombs. Slang's the god of malice. Maybe check the tombstones. Yeah, that's right. There are nobles buried here. Alright, I'm gonna... Uh, let's cast a spell. Wait, I, I look at my health. Yeah, what is big? Big is one stamina. Is anything free? Zip. 
It's not free. What parts do you have? I have everything besides the name of the god of pride. That's the only thing I don't know. Uh, hopefully this doesn't kill me. I'm going to climb it. You test the ivy. Seems tightly wound about the railings. Wedging one toe between the metal bars, you grip the cords of the plant and haul your way up. Then the second foot is up, and you are climbing. So you can feel the plant tearing under your hands. Keep going. Ow. You keep going, hoping that if you move quickly, you will clear the fence before the ivy comes away. You don't manage it. Near the very top, you feel the sap leaking between your fingers as the cords of the plant snap. Then you fall painfully back onto the rubble-strewn ground. However, all is not lost. Where the plant is torn away from the fence, a foxhole has been revealed, leading underneath the fence. Something, a rat perhaps, scurries through the fence and back into the wasteland. All right, we're going in the hole. You kneel down and wriggle your way into the foxhole. It is so narrow that you have to keep your arms out in front of you and drag your pack along behind. But thankfully, it is short, coming up on the other side of the fence, less than two strides away. You pull yourself up from a hole in the ground into the graveyard. Try Korga again. Last time they answered you still, they just didn't bless you. I remember him standing up and saying, um, I'm going to destroy you. How dare you take a life of somebody? I'm going to kill you. How dare you? Okay, you're once again standing in the city necropolis in the shadow of the yews and gravestones. Okay, the sun is setting behind the wall. Look around the gravestones. Is there anything we didn't get here? You step nervously off the path and walk between the nearest tombs. Some are ancient headstones tilted to crazy angles. Others are fresh, neatly carved. Okay, we were here. We were, we were here. Is anything here? Wait, grave goods? Shit. All right, oldest grave. Lorag. Ugh. All right. No, we Lorag, Lorag doesn't know. We already talked to Lorag. Don't argue with Korga. Look elsewhere. We just need the god's name. You were rude to him last time. Somebody said, there are two ways to get the final part of the spell line. The second way is a bit eccentric. <laughs> I love how you put that. That's great. It's a little eccentric. <laughs> go to Korga. You don't need the Korga's blessing. All right, we'll go to Korga. Let's go to Korga. Okay, you return to the path beside the... Is, is the well... All right. Wait, is there, is there food in here? Pull up the bucket. Yes, drink it. Thank God. Thank God. I'm so happy because it, it on like you can rewind, right? But if you have one HP, one HP, one HP through it, all of your rewinds, you're kind of just screwed. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go talk to Korga again. We'll see if he says anything different. Okay, here we go up to Korga. You will not get the line from Korga. You need to go into the sewer. Should I go into the sewer? Is that the way? It's all right. All right. Can I, I'm going. Is it going in the sewer? All right. We're going in. We're going in. We're going in. We're going in. Sewer's the way to do it. We're going in. There probably is another way, but look down. Yeah. The wells lead to the sewer. I hope you're not lying to me. Throw a coin in. Can I not climb in this? Wait. This is the. Is this not it? Throw a coin in. Stop throwing coins in. How many coins is it I have to throw in here? Throw, how many coins do I have to throw? This is... What's happening? Back it up, back it up. I thought I could go in this one. I can't go in this one. I can't go in this one. I can't go in this one. <laughs> okay. Korga. Oh, God. You walk for half an hour through thick trees along a narrowing track until you reach a fork in the road. To the left, the track gets narrower. To the right, a massive shadow looms. Yep, okay, so this is, we've been through here before. We're gonna make a move. So wait, wouldn't stepping in the circle in Korga's thing is a teleport trap, and it puts me into the sewer, doesn't it? Yep, that's what we're doing. Uh, okay, let's make a move. Okay, look for an opening. Uh, oh yeah, we pay, we pay the gargoyle, right? Drop in a gold piece and look into the eyes and we get health. Yep. Very good. Climb up. Uh, we're going to do cast spell. We're going to probably going to do big because, or should we do float? 
big works, float works. They're all, they're all, they're all one stamina. Yep, we scale it, scale it, scale it halfway up. Here we are. Look at the view. It's beautiful up here. Walk around to the north face. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Watch the torches. They're going crazy. Climb higher. Okay, here we go. I'm just literally going to walk in. I'm going to give the double middle finger to Korga. I'm going to say, hey, fucking suck my ass. And then I'm going to fucking leave. I'm going to walk directly into the trap. I'm going to make him so angry. I'm going to be like, hey, fuck you. You're a piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of And then step right in the circle. He's going to be like, oh, why did I turn that on? I should have kept it off. Yeah, well, you're going to follow me? I could learn another spell too, right? Should I go learn another spell? That would work, wouldn't it? I get another chance to learn a second one. Yeah, why not? Let's do that before I um, before I get out of here. Uh, let's create a new spell. For people that didn't see yesterday's stream, I'm sorry, I'm kind of blowing through this, but uh, we did already do all of this very slowly and very methodically. So um, if you haven't caught up yet, I suggest you do. Look to the stars. If you're a mage and not a mere sorcerer, who knows what spell you could weave at a spot like this. It's the best place in the city. Let's try to make a new spell. We did purr last time, which is summon a thousand cats. Tack is really good. Tar. Uh, puke. Puke exists. Luck. I'm imagining luck is probably a good one too. Black is really good. I think we can just create whatever. Do tack. Tack. What's lure? Luck, lure. Tack is the best. You should do tack. Please tack. All right, let's do tack. You fashion the stars into alignment and an enchantment is created. You feel a tingling sensation in your wrist and you look down to see flashing sparks in your palm that flicker different colors. For a moment, gold, then white, then black. Close my fist. You flex your fingers, ready to grip the sparks, which begin to flash faster and faster. Perhaps the shade of the spark is important. Will you grab a certain color or trust to chance? I don't know. Gold? Just grab gold, black? Is gold going to give me money? Just grab, Giga Chad. All right. Just grab. You have no way of knowing the spell, how the spell will last, so you waste no time. You close your fist tight. The sparks are hot in your palm, but the pain fades quickly. And when you reopen your fist, you found that you are now holding a wooden face mask of black wood. The sparks and the spell itself are gone. You found one of the secret spells of the Temple of Korga. The icy wind chills you to the bone. That is a new spell that I can do. That's fear, right? Where is it? It's Gak, isn't it? Fog, mud, niftel, gak. Terrible fear within another's mind. Brave creatures will suffer a cold sweat, while cowardly ones will be reduced to cowering jelly. It's gak. All right, it's time. Then head back down and just go right in. Should I just try to steal something? Okay, here we are. Seems that this is the ziggurat of Korga the Gracious. Go inside. Oh, shit. I forgot about the snake. I forgot about the snake. No, you dick! Oh my god, rewind. Get out of here. Minus four, minus four, minus four, full blast again. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. We cheat. We cheat. We cheat. We cheat. All right. Korga, you're a little bit of a dick. There's Korga uh, up there. Steal something. Yeah, fuck this place. The temple is cluttered with so many valuable artifacts, it is hard to decide where to begin. There are sculptures, plates, candlesticks, and shields of solid gold. A table covered with a silk cloth holds a crystal decanter and four golden goblets. In another corner, a fountain showers with an endless stream of diamonds and jewels. Take a handful of fucking jewels. You go over to the fountain, gazing in wonderment at the sparkling splendor that issues from its spout. You can simply put your pack underneath the stream, open, and make enough money to hire an army to take with you to Mampang. You take a fistful of the jewels, but then you freeze. The humming sound in the temple has become louder, and you have a strong sense that something is watching you. 
Turn around and look. You turn your gaze up and see nothing, but wait a moment. Weren't there four stone demons up in the rafters above the altar before? The gargoyles are flapping in the air above you. They are still stone, but now their jaws are working and their teeth snap in the air in front of their faces. You begin to ready a spell, but the creatures know a sorcerer when they see one. In moments, one has dived for your right arm and with a single bite, severs it clean away. What? You look down in horror. You will not be able to cast any more spells now or wield your sword well. The gargoyles, however, back a little, perhaps hoping that the punishment has been suitably severe. I can never cast a spell ever again. <laughs> that sucks. Um, we, we ain't living with that. I know, I'm just I'm a cheating Andy so bad right now. Whatever. Whatever, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. It's fine. What else can I do here? Should I just zap the statue? Should I just cast lightning and put it directly into Korg's head? It's three stamina, though. That's bad. Do hot and just burn this place down. Doesn't matter. I mean, I, I'm trying to just get to the sewer. Because the, the sewer is where we can apparently figure out this last word, maybe. Alright, I'm just walking across. Let's go. Nonsense and superstition. You stride across the carpet towards the idol. But along the way, something happens. Although you cannot be sure of what. One moment you are in the Temple of Korga, and the next, you are in the sewer. This is where we want to be. Let's find this goddamn line. You've landed in a disgusting pile of unbelievable filth. Slime, excrement, sludge, dung, and dregs. All the way up to your neck. You are evidently in the sewers of Kare. Wait. You wait a moment. As a nearby chute ejects a torrent of filth and pig swill. Then you get yourself to your feet and wipe off the sludge as best you can. Oh, we just got Elden Ringed, by the way. Where am I? You stand in a cavernous sewer tunnel, filled knee-deep with slow-flowing, stench-filled water. It is pitch black. You could be standing on a mountaintop or inside of a coffin. Except, that is, for a single speck of light somewhere in the far distance. You wait, and within a few moments, the tunnel is filled with goblins. There are not one or two, but a whole army, led by a tall, stocky elder goblin, and chanting a weird, guttural song. They pause a short distance away from you, and the leader steps forward. Ye should not be here. This is the domain of the Mad King. And of us. Well, fuck you. Gak. You cast a spell, whipping out the black face mask. The goblins shake and quiver with fear. You are clearly a powerful being. We will not trouble you. And with that, he waves his army on. They march off into the tunnel. Je jeer at them. You call and jeer at the goblins as they pass, but they are well trained. Even the grunts at the back ignore you. At the rear are two goblin generals. How many more soldiers does the Mad King want? Thousands. They don't get what he gets. That he will. The two walk on, still talking in muttering voices, like this one. I didn't see that there were no quotes. The goblins are tramping away up the sewer. Alright, head the other way or follow the goblins. I mean, where does this go? This goes down here, potentially up. This goes up and potentially over here. I'm going to follow them with the face mask on and just be like... <laughs> this guy's still following us, this fucking weirdo. Jim Carrey from... Yeah, I'm going to be running around. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Do you know what I was... Holy shit. That person? You... that I didn't even say it, but that was exactly what was in my mind. Jim Carrey from the mask when he's in the office. And he's holding it up to his face and it doesn't work. And he's just going like, <laughs> and he's making all these noises and jumping around. That is what I was just doing. That's what, that was in my head. I just didn't say it. I didn't know how many people were going to understand that. <laughs> that was the Swedish chef. Hey, is the mask in the Library of Congress? 
Is it? Because it, it, it better be. That's like, has to be, right? Can somebody look that up? Is is Jim Carrey's The Mask in the Library of Congress? If Why? No, not the mask itself. Like the movie prop. I'm talking about the the movie. <laughs> I think people in Congress need, uh, like want to go look at it. Yeah, if this one movie, somebody said it. If this somebody said they shot it into space. If this one movie they should shoot into space, it's the mask. Just confuse the fuck out of all the aliens. There's only Jim Carrey's the mask and and a wheel, like a like a car tire. Like what the hell is going on with what? What is this? Just that would be crazy, right? What the fuck even is this thing? A car tire with the hubcap on. That's all of our inventions. <laughs> Oh, we found this strange thing. Saya, look what we found. We pulled it into the beam. It's a, it's a wheel. That's what they put in their, uh, their thing, in their time capsule. A fucking wheel in the Jim Carrey movie? Well, we aren't going there. They would never... No, we, they, we would never get invaded. We would never be invaded. Why would you invade this place? Why would you ever care? No, no, no. We can just skip that planet. They just... They sent out a wheel. And a Jim Carrey movie. We don't have to worry about that place. Don't shoot any interesting technology there, right? It's like, oh man, we should share our tech. No, keep, are you kidding me? Don't send an iPhone up there. Send a burnt torch. And a wheel. They're going to skip our planet. That's isolationist. Uh, would you want the aliens to know the technology that we have? I I don't want... What, oh, yeah, let's make sure the satellite communicates. All right, anyways, where were we? Um, um, it's not. Did uh, Jim Carrey, the mask, is not in the Library of Congress, but Shrek is. Yeah, I don't... Put, I send up, like, a stick with, a, a, a like, a cloth wrapping around it and, like, a shark tooth on it. Look, yes, tools! We have tool! We tool! Oh, poor Earth. No, 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 no. No, we just leave them. Send up a stick. <laughs> yeah, the fact, the fact that it would be in a rocket ship means we have the technology to have a rocket ship communicate in the first place. That would be even more bizarre, right? Why? We're not fooling anybody. Why would they put this in the... We, we have rocket fuel, but they're showing us that they have primitive tools. <laughs> That's stupid. Uh, yeah, never mind. What I said was dumb. We have the technology to throw that shit on. Whatever. All right, let's move on. I fucked up. I fucked up. You trail along behind the goblins like a shadow. <laughs> I can't move on yet. That was really dumb. I don't know, for some reason I was thinking about, in my mind... I'm thinking about a tool with, like, Earth carved in it somehow, being shot out of a cannon into space. Like, it's not a rocket. We just have, like, bag floating around in space. It's not on a rocket ship. There's a bag in space that they come across, and it's shitty tools and a wheel, right? That's what I was thinking of. Like, we don't leave a rocket ship. It's just a bag. <laughs> these, these, like, primitive cavemen are just taking their tools and throwing them as hard as they can into the air. It'll get, we'll get soon. Strong. Reach space. Imagine if we did kind of what Elon Musk did with the car, but instead slingshot out a metal box with sticks and shiny rocks. Yeah. Who cares? All right. All right. I'm, I'm done with, I'm done. We're going to move on. It's just too stupid to not at least spend five minutes on it. What if wood was rare to them? That's true too. Like shit, we got to be careful. What if trees? What if wood was an unbelievable resource? And the aliens are like, wait a minute, they have wood on this planet? Liquefy it and take the, all the trees. Don't send anything to space. They can come find us, okay? We don't send anything to space. Some people might see it as a threat. Uh, boss, there's a metal box here that has earth carved on it, and there's an axe in here. Shoot the fucking beam at it. That's an act of violence. That's a threat. Please move on. I have an essay due. Well, go do your essay. You're assuming that aliens are as stupid as we are. This is a declaration of war. 
the aliens finally show up one day. Like the president goes on camera. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the president. I just need to make sure everyone understands that the aliens are arriving on Tuesday. And they think we're all primitive cave men and cave women. So, for one day only, please everybody, don't speak in any languages. Everyone crawl around and say noises and grow your beards out as long as you can. We keep up, we gotta keep up like the, the actual thing here. We could keep the, the personas up. The aliens land, everyone's just kind of like throwing rocks. Like, making sounds. <laughs> Grow a beard by Tuesday. Yeah, some people can do that, not me. You can do it in the Bernie voice. <laughs> all right, let's go. Destroy all the cars. Yeah, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Americans, uh, all cars need to be destroyed, uh, or not destroyed, but hidden. Uh, there'll be government-issued tarps to put over all your vehicles and all your houses. Uh, everyone is to dig a hole five feet deep in their backyard and hang out in there for just six hours while the aliens walk around and uh, survey the planet. How long would you have to keep that up? What if they wanted to hang out? Oh, this is beautiful. What a wonderful planet. And they're so primitive. I think we'll stay here for uh, two or three uh, parsequins. Oh, two or three parsequins. What's that, a week? Oh, on your planet, that's 3,000 years. Oh, <laughs> well. Well. I'm going to do it for a little bit longer. <laughs> and they know, right? These motherfuckers know. Ah, yeah, I wonder how long they're going to keep this up. They know. They want to see, like, just how long we'll do this for. I feel like you came from an alternate reality. I'm from this reality. They're, what do you mean? Look, just because the Marvel movies came out and we're like, look, there's this Spider-Man and there's another Spider-Man. We don't know shit. Guys, it's just us and the cockroaches, okay? I'm sorry. It's just us and the cockroaches... And like the the bunny rabbits, there's nothing else. Well, it doesn't matter. That's a big spoiler. A spoiler for what? I don't know. Look, I, okay, I get the theory, but the fact that okay, so there's the, what? There's like an infinite amount of me sitting in this chair having an infinite amount of rants about the alien joke. No, it's just us and the bugs. There's nothing else. It's just us and the fucking earwigs. <laughs> Who is he talking to? <laughs> I know I'm stalling. All right, all right. I'm not stalling, though. This is just an interesting conversation. What if they came down and they were large, sentient earwigs? I get to stick around. Because I they will look at, at all my history here, and they'll be like, this guy was talking about earwigs, and he talked about how they were cool, and they were an awesome group of uh, beings. And I, they would, I would become an ambassador to Earth. Sorry, guys. Would you ever eat earwig meat? No. All right. You trail along behind the goblins like a shadow. God, we've been, we've been sitting here for like 10 minutes. The Vaclands tribes are ready. The first goblin general hisses. The second goblin makes a chittering noise, something close to a laugh. Ready to run through the city like a river of molten steel at a word from the king. A few words, but I have learnt a few of myself. Hey, what was that? Freeze. You freeze. The goblins keep walking away out of earshot, not stopping. They do not look around, but continue talking in low voices. Okay. Catch up. You hurry up and catch up with the goblins. I thought I said a corpse. The tunnel turns a corner. Something glints from the side of the sewer. I gotta keep up. I have to keep up. I have to keep up. I missed it? You missed the spell line? What? I missed the spell line? No, I didn't. Keep up. I'm going to run right into them. Keep up. I heard nothing. The other replies. You heard a keep pace just behind them in the dark. Further on. You know one of the lines? One goblin is quizzing the other. The goblin spits in agreement. I ever heard the Mad King whisper to himself. Nguren Forger's pride. You can't believe your luck. It's the second half of Theta's spell line. I got them all now. I win. Got it. We've got all the lines. We just don't know the order, but it's okay. This is the first time I'm ever going to complete part two. Truly actually getting the good end and not the bad end every single time. Okay. Something. Let's look at it. 
You stop to look at it, losing the sight of the goblins. It's a vial of... It's a vial of potion. Sniff it. You uncork it and sniff it. It's Blimbleberry. Quaff it. I should probably quaff it. Yeah, I quaff it. You unstopper the Blimberry potion and knock it back quickly. You feel a little better and all traces of hunger are gone also. The goblins disappear. So, does that actually mean that I know everything? Do I know the whole thing? I got the whole thing. By Korga's grace and Forga's pride. One lock made of golems hide. Tumblers two sealed deep inside. I bid you portals open wide. Got it. That's definitely the order. That's the rhyme, right? Okay, I can turn back. Or we can keep going. Might as well just keep going. If the king knew you even knew that much. Tell him and I cut your throat. Ah, stay quiet. And maybe we'll get out of this. Oh, wait. Stay quiet. Shh. Maybe we'll cut his throat. Just then you see more lights up ahead. It seems the sewer is opening out into a wider space. The opening. All the lines rhyme? Do they? One lock made of golems hide. Tumblers two sealed deep inside. My Korg is... Oh, they all rhyme. <laughs> they all... Uh, whatever. You slip into the hall. It is warm with the fetid breath of a thousand creatures who drink and laugh and clash swords down in the muck. On his throne, their king seems to be sleeping or else they have killed him by accident. He's a man, not a goblin. How does he control this rabble? You wait, transfixed by the strange scene. The king coughs suddenly. The effect is bizarre. At the noise, every goblin in the great chamber freezes and looks up. The man is thin, as if he has not eaten in months, and pale, as if he has been in the dark just as long. His hair is long and gray, and he slumps over the side of his throne, as though desperately ill. His clothes are long, soiled robes that perhaps were once quite fine. On his hand is a ring, a diamond ring, which he gazes at periodically. And on his head, he wears a gray circlet of a dull silver metal you cannot quite place. The king pushes on the arm of his chair, attempting to stand, then shivers and falls down. Silence. The chamber is suddenly quiet. Look at his face. You peer through the gloom through the grime and dirt and the thickness of his beard, trying to see his face. There's something familiar about it. You've seen it somewhere before. The king fingers the circlet on his head, as if scared it will slip. My creatures, the time is almost on us. As the night draws in, we will rise up and open the gates. We will rub this filthy city clean. He is broken off into a fit of coughing. <laughs> you keep waiting, wanting to see what comes next. The long journey is nearly over. The process I began when I blinded Lord Theta and left him a beggar. Finally, the council will be destroyed and the city will be cleansed. It's not Dumbledore. So this is, this is Sansa's. Yeah. This is the first noble. Uh, I'm afraid I'm, if I keep listening, you stay hidden. A goblin close by, by your elbow murmurs. How much longer do we have to listen to this? His companion silences him with a talon to the arm. Shut up. Wait and listen. You stay hidden and wait. The king finally gets to his feet and raises a wizened arm into the air. I will open the gates for you tonight, and we will make this city pure. The king raises a cheer, and the goblins as one cheer back, throwing their swords up in the air. A thousand blades flash, and the confusion when they land is extreme. Every goblin cowering for cover and then squabbling to retrieve their blade. All right, let's go. Move now. It's time to get the hell out of here. Sticking to the shadows, you begin to creep around the perimeter of the hall, aiming for one of those long ladders that disappear up into the darkness. 
You get about halfway before the goblins nearby turn, pushing at each other, and you are forced to freeze. The king calls for silence, but the goblins do not hear him. They are still in a mess with their swords. Go, 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 get out, go. Out. Just leave. Just run, 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 run. Keep going, keep going, keep going. No, no, no! You creep further around the edge of the hall. The king calls again for silence, clutching his circlet with one hand. This time, the goblins fall silent. You realize with a heavy heart that you've missed the best opportunity you will get to escape the chamber by the ladder. Fuck him. What? Okay. Look at his face. Alright. I Okay, you know who it is. Familiar. Alright, go. Andy, rewind. That's fine. Uh, yep. Keep going. Make a move. <laughs> <laughs> we get out. The long journey is nearly over. The process I began when I blinded Lord Theta and left him a beggar. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go. And we're out. How much longer do we have to listen to this? Make a move. We're out. They raise a cheer. Hooray. Make a move. We're out. Get out. Leave. Quick. Taking advantage of the confusion, you scurry quickly up the ladder. For a few rungs, you are in the open. It must look like a strange oversized rat climbing the rigging in this underground cell. But you climb fast and quietly, and are quickly lost into the shadows overhead once more. You climb the ladder into a narrow stone chimney, which climbs at an angle. After a while, the ladder gives out, and there is nothing but stone above you in the distance. A circle of light. God. Float in the air. You cast the spell, making your body featherweight. You then paw your way up the stone chimney, pushing off the walls with your hands and feet, as if you were dancing up towards the light. You emerge in a grateful heap to the fresh air of the outside world. It's oh, it's right here. We're I got the I, we're let's go. Let's go, 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 go. You've emerged from a well house in a clearing in the shadow of the city wall. Looking around, you realize how far you've come. On the other side of this clearing is the north gate itself. Wasting no time, you stride over to the gate. We gotta go, now. You reach the other side of the clearing unscathed and stand below the enormous doors. Okay. What's the... The North Gate spell? I know what the first line is. Here it is. Something that the Korga's grace, one lock deep inside I bid you. Korga, lock, deep, bid. Let's go. Recite the spell. You knock firmly on the door until you wake with the voice. You knock firmly on the door until you wake the voice within. Do you know the spell to open this gate? You close your eyes and try to recall the scratched poem in the sewer chamber. Uh, by Korga's grace and Forga's pride. One lock made of Gollum's hide. Tumblers, too, sealed deep inside. I bid you portals open wide. You stand back to see what effect your lines have had. The voice has gone silent. You wait impatiently to see what will happen. Then the gate creaks. The tumblers drop. And the wooden panels begin to move. The door is opening. Booming out, the voice declares, The gate is under your control. But it is moving slowly. Looking over your shoulder, you see an army of goblins emerging from a well shaft, and they are racing towards you. Uh-oh. Do I just run? I've, I don't think I've ever done this. Do I just run through? Go, 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 go. You rush through the gate into the backlands. We got Just go. Go, 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 go. This is, I'm not waiting. Beyond the north gate. In the darkness around you, figures are moving. Pouring towards the gate into the city. Inside, you see the goblin still coming. Close it on him. Gate! Close! The gate obeys immediately, swinging shut like a trap. From the low hills around, red-faced marsh goblins are springing up and pouring towards the sealed gate like flies into a fallen ox. They begin to scramble on top of one another, trying to bridge the wall with their own bodies. Destroy the goblins. The goblins must be destroyed. As though on command, a ghostly figure forms in the air before you. It is Lorag. You control the gate! Use it! 
Uh, you do it. Uh, I don't know how. Try. It is hopeless. How can you use a magic you do not know? You close your eyes, feeling your anger and frustration rising. The hated goblins, this meddling specter, the long and difficult road behind, and the one still to come, all seem to bite into your very soul like wolf teeth. There is suddenly a terrible sound and a smell of burning. Open my eyes. You open your eyes, there's not a goblin in sight. Just blackened grass around the gate. And black soot in piles on top of the wall. The ghost nods slowly to you. Move <laughs> the head that on. All the... <laughs> I'll keep it on, fuck it. All the hatred of a whole city of thieves and liars and murderers stored for centuries. Ah, a little leaked out into the red eyes. The rest was waiting for this. For one, strong of heart enough to use it. Go, be safe. The long road is long. Huh. He gestures to the path ahead. Be safe. You nod and turn to go. So what? I, so I burn the city. So that's my. I did it. No, just the goblins. Oh, this is getting intense. All right, here we go. Outside Kare into the backlands. From a short distance away, you look back to see the plain outside the gate is quite empty. Not a single marsh goblin remains. Not a single short sword or hooked pick. It is like they have been wiped from the surface of the earth. And inside Kare, something similar must have occurred, as where there was the sound of clashing swords, there is now only silence. You have saved Kare. A foul city, perhaps, but not one whose citizens deserve to die by a goblin sword. But it has been at a cost to your strength. You turn your back. Your own road lies ahead, through the plains of Badubak, and on towards Mampang. The backlands await. You remember the words of the Site Master Sergeant as you left the outpost settlement. Once you have crossed the city port of traps, you will enter the backlands. They say that day and night are controlled by forces other than the sun. And from Kare too, your progress will be watched. To Badubak. Your journey across Kare is complete. In the course of your journey, you committed murder and saved the city port of Kare from destruction. You played 11 games of Swindlestones, winning 9 and losing 2. You learned the truth about what the crown does, a riddle about the sleepless ram, and that silver weapons harm the undead. You collected a fantastic number of magical artifacts. A large lump of beeswax, a cloth skull cap, two giant's teeth, seven goblin's teeth, a black face mask, a green haired wig, a bracelet of bone, one sun jewel, a bamboo pipe. Also, you found a bottle of poison, a bottle of bark essence, a bottle of snake bite antidote, and a tinderbox. You're very happy considering this was your grocery list, and it is now complete. You're still armed only with your original sword, and have no rations and 25 gold pieces, and a spell book. The adventure continues in Sorcery 3, The Seven Serpents.